episode 22 of the Dorton and Dr. Bay podcast. I'm Dorton. I am Nick Duckett. Nick, you found the headband. You found the wristbands. I'm happy. I'm happy to see that. I feel so alive. Finally got the headband again. Oh, I'm ready to rock. Ready to go, man. Just in time for the draft. Yes. There, I need to go this way. We are in business now, folks. We're in business now. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not certain of what we are doing tonight, we are doing an MLB all-time player draft. So, any player that has ever played Major League Baseball, we are going to be doing that. So, the criteria is going to be one player for each starting position. So, first, second, third, short, catcher, left, center, right field. Five starting pitchers, five relief pitchers, and one D. So, that is what we are doing for that. Um, that's pretty much the only criteria that we have for this. We are going to be doing another one, too. Next week, we'll be doing Jordan versus LeBron debate. And then the week after that, we'll probably that do be good, folks. the all-time list for NBA or NFL, NHL. So, what we do want to get all for the major sports to an all-time draft for that. But this mm-hmm. week is Major League Baseball. So without further ado, Mr. Duckett, are you ready? I'm ready. Also, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you listen to this entire show because at the end, there will be a decision being made in regards to something, and we will get to that moment when we get there. So make sure you tune in. Don't fast forward to the end. You watch the whole show. But we do have to decide who picks first. Mr. Duckett, I believe you have a coin with you. Yes. Okay. Um, so however we want to do this, I'll just be tails. You can be heads. Tails never fails, baby. Sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll catch and flip or whatever. Yeah, sure. All right. Let's hope I don't fail on this. Your heads? I'm tails. Your tails. I'm heads. All right. And I know you would never lie. It's tails. It's tails. All righty. So we're just going to do every other pick. So it's not going to be a snake. It's I won't be picking. The Nick won't have two straight picks. It'll just be rotating every other. So clearly George Washington knows that you need an advantage because I'm, I'm just the superior picker. I mean, fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's uh, why he was president numero uno. He, he's a smart guy. <laughs> that's that's awesome. So, I since I have the first overall pick, there's a number of different players we could go with. And remember, any player that has ever played in the history of baseball can't get picked. So it might be. So, kind of- I want to know your approach. You know, do you take just whoever you think the best player is right here, or are you going to try to take a position that's maybe a little weaker and you're going to take the better of the two? Yeah, you know, I, I think I got to go with... I think I got to go with what I think is the best. Um, I am going to go with Aaron right field. So that will be my pick. Hank Aaron, ladies and gentlemen, in his 20-year career, hit over 300, uh, 755 home runs, over 2,000 RBIs, 2,000 runs scored, over 3,000 hits, 340 stolen bases, made 25 all-star teams, and he started right really? field. I didn't realize he made 25 all-star teams. Holy yep. cow. Uh, so obviously that is a record there. He only had one MVP award. In 1950, yeah. he had 322, 44, 132 RBIs, and he won one World Series in his career. So I had to go with Hammer and Hank for my pick right field, Mr. Duckett. You know, I'm happy with that because, to be honest, I don't know. You know, Hank Aaron, I hope he's not listening. I don't think he is. I honestly, I don't know if I'd even have him in my outfield. I'm that high on some other guys. So, mm-hmm. okay. I, did not think I'd have a decision between the two of these. I have no idea who to take. There is, it's between two guys. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. That's tough. 
if I don't take the one, people are going to call me an idiot. But Well, I mean, that's a risk you got to be willing to I'm going to take him just because I think there's a bigger chance you take him. Okay. I'm going to take the great – I'm going to take the Bambino. I'm going to take Babe Ruth for okay. – well, wait. You just took right field. Well, whatever. I'll take Babe Ruth anyways. You're, you're tossing him in right field then? Yeah. You're, you're not Probably gonna shouldn't take right field right after you did, but oh well, whatever. You know what? That's that's fine. I'm just I'm just bold. I'm confident that way. You got to do what you got to do. I respect it. I respect it. I do. Um, now I think I think you, I get... you probably could have taken him at a different position then anyway, so it's probably fine. True. We haven't really discussed that. So we got ba- Hank Aaron number one, Babe Ruth number two. I am going starting pitching. I'm going to go with the I need it. only Walter Johnson. Ooh, that was my number one pitcher. Welcome to it. In his career, over 400 career wins, 217 earned run average, had 110 shutouts in his career. Most ever. Most ever, which is an outstanding 500. This is, I think this stat is absolutely outstanding. 531 complete games. Really? I don't know if that's right or not, but I don't know. Supposedly that's, that's what it is. So, but I'm going with Walter Johnson for my starting pitcher. Number one, Mr. Duckett, the floor is yours. Oh, well, it's between two outfielders again. Okay. I'm just going to load my outfield, man. Gosh, I just – I want to take – these are, in my opinion, maybe the best two players in history that I'm picking between. Sure. And I've already, and I, and I've already got Ruth. I'm not even putting him in there. I'm going to go with the best center fielder of all time, Willie Mays. I like it. Oh, I gotta grab a sheet of paper here. Hold on. Yeah, well, I'll be right with you. Um, Willie Mays, that is a phenomenal pick. I was hoping he would slide just a tad. Well, apparently, he did not. One of one of my favorite players ever. Although I obviously never seen him play. Sure. I haven't either. I'm an outstanding player. Say, hey, Willie, one of the best catches of all time. Uh, just over that polo grounds, right? That catch. Yep, polo grounds. Um, I like that pick, though. Willie Mays, that's a solid, solid piece there. Uh, I got to go I gotta go with catcher next. I think there is some great catchers to have played, but I, I don't think the list is as good. So, with the best catcher of all time, from the Cincinnati Reds, Johnny Bench. I am glad you picked catcher here because most people, almost everyone's going to say Bench is the best catch of all time, I think. Mm-hmm. Some may say uh, Yogi. But honestly, I have a different guy, and that's why I didn't pick. And we'll debate. We can debate that when I get to it. Sure. Because I'm higher on a different guy. Okay. So. But that's a good pick. The dude won 10 gold gloves and yep. all sorts of home runs. Great hitter, over 300 career home runs. Yes. Thousand hits. All right. But now, so, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to take this guy, but you know I love me some Barry Bonds. Oh, so yeah. So, if I can have Barry Bonds, Willie Mays, and Babe Ruth in my outfield, good luck. So, that's who I'm taking next. There's Flap and get old Barry and left. Just imagine Barry, Willie, and Babe out. You know, well, maybe not defensively with Ruth, but holy cow! Yeah, that's that's a two, three, four in the batting lineup. That's that's decent. That is decent. <laughs> decent. <laughs> um, who, by the way, is the best hitter of all time? Barry Bonds. Throwing that out there. Okay. Yeah. Go on. It's a uh, toss up, but I would take Barry. Sure. I. I. Yeah. I mean, I you definitely you certainly can't go wrong with that. Um, so next on the list, I gotta go. Hard, right? 
like, yeah, I go on back to and I think Mr. Duckett, I have to go even though a little this is who I'm going with. I'm trying to procrastinate here to get by myself some more time. Yeah, I'm not sure you know who you're going with. <laughs> well, I thought I was I might go another route. So I am going to go starting pitching again. And I'm gonna go with Randy Johnson. Ooh, I love me some Randy Johnson. I'm gonna go my pitchers, bro. Over three three twenty nine earned run average. This stat I thought was really amazing. He had a strikeout in 28.6% of the batters that he ever faced. He's um, good. Yeah, yeah, he's a stud. Over 4,800 strikeouts in his career. What fascinates me about Randy is I believe he's a five-time Cy Young winner, but he won, I think, four consecutive with Arizona I when believe. he was, like, in his upper 30s. He was yeah. better as, like, a 37, 38-year-old as he was, like, you know, 28. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Randy is Randy Johnson is pitched till he was four five. Probably my favorite pitcher of all time. I, I do like Randy Johnson and I love just the big unit. The dude hit a seagull. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> and he's like six uh, ten. The big unit. Yes. All right. He's like a big time photographer, you know that? You yeah. Ever seen that piece he's on him? Yeah. Pictures on there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love me some Randy Johnson. He is probably my favorite pitcher of all time. So you got Walter and Randy. You got the good old Johnson, bro. Here, yeah, yes, sir. All righty, let's see it. Who, 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 who's in the? If I remember right, when we did the current players, I think I was kind of loaded up with my starting pitching. I think so. I don't know. I might. I mean, there's so many pitchers throughout history to pick from. I might wait a little bit. I might yeah. just try to load my team. Ooh, but the one guy, I can't take him now. Darn. Okay, I have to ask you. Alex Rodriguez, can I make him a – can I consider him a shortstop? I think you could. I'd, I'd accept it. I'd accept I it. I will take Alex Rodriguez then, who is a three-time MVP, although two of them were at third base. But even as a shortstop in Texas and Seattle, he was an absolute monster and – Won an MVP at the shortstop position and is one of, I believe, six players? Six players in MLB history with 3,000 hits and 500 home runs. Now, Ooh. I know he juiced and got busted a few times. Uh, so, I mean, how good was is he without it? I don't know. But his stats are unbelievable. And compared to other shortstops, it's not, not even close. So, yeah. I will take Alex Rodriguez. I like it. I like it. Um, who, by the way, is a fantastic um, announcer. Oh, he's so good. I could listen to A-Rod announce baseball all day. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like that he's on there and Pete Rose is on there. You know what? Whatever. People screw up. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. He uh, he does a great, great job. I really enjoy listening to him and Big Poppy specifically. Yeah. Um, I am going – I got to go. I got to get hitter here. I got to get hitting. And I got to go center field. Now, for me. Ooh, I think I know who this is. I think it's between a couple guys. I think it's between Ben Griffey Jr., Mike Trout, Mickey Mantle, and Ty Cobb. I and think that's. Ben Revere. Sure. <laughs> Charlie Blackman. Uh, so, I personally, just in my opinion, I personally would take Ken Griffey Jr. after Mays, but I would like to see what you think. I think... Okay, so this is, this is what we're doing. I am going to go... I think I got to go Ken Griffey Jr. in center. Yeah. Do you I, I do you think Ken Griffey Jr. is the most favorite player of all time? Oh, like, 
Everybody loves some Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, yeah. You can't go wrong with him. That's for dang. He might be the most favorite baseball player of all time. I kind of wish I got makes sense sooner to be able to, like, watch him in his prime. Because when we were growing up and watching him, it was like Cincinnati. He wasn't a Hall of Famer. He wasn't a Hall of Famer with the Reds. He dealt if if he didn't have those injuries towards the end, like he used to not miss games, but then he he some he had some injuries. If it weren't for the injuries, to if he his injuries slowed him down so much at the end of his career, yeah, if he would have stayed healthy throughout most of his career. He could potentially be, and I'm sure there's some people who say he's the best player ever, but he yeah. could potentially be like you know the best player ever by most, or you know second easy. But the injury is kind of affecting. But he still has what six hundred some home runs and like yeah. ten time Gold Glove winner. Yeah, yeah. not gonna go wrong with that. Game. All right, I just can't believe the Mariners had him, Randy Johnson, what uh, Jay Buhner, or Martin. Each year later, <laughs> Edgar, and they never did anything. But top ten mystery science has yet to discover how the Mariners never won a series. Oh well. Yeah. You're on the clock. Gosh, I haven't taken a picture yet, but boy, I think I'm going to stick with hitters. I'm just going to load this lineup. And since yeah. I'm going to go third base, because I think the best third baseman of all time, after taking A Rod out of the discussion, because I took him at short, is clearly Mike Schmidt. I think he's well above the others, so I'm going to take Mike Schmidt. Who is a three-time MVP and a ten-time Gold Glove winner? The dude hits dingers. Let's just put it this way: he good. Yeah, he is very good. And so overall, Mike. Team oh, it. <laughs> Mike Schmidt. So I currently have Bonds, Mays, Ruth, Rodriguez, Schmidt. Good thing you got some good pitchers to pitch for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got some decent ones. Hopefully that'll help me out. Uh, I am going to go. I'm going to go shortstop. Um, a rod. Yeah, I like that. That's a good thing. Um, Shortstop is kind of tough because I don't feel there's a consensus best shortstop of all time. I think you could go a number of different routes. It's kind of weaker than the other ones, I'd say, mainly. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could go, yeah, you know, Ernie Banks, uh, Derek Jeter, Honus Wagner, Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah, I'm not a Jeter guy. <laughs> but I think I got to go with – I. Al Rich Jr. Oh, all right. Got like Durability. Hey, he's going to be out there. He's going to be playing every game for me, number one. Number two, I mean, over 400 home runs in his career, over 3,000 hits. People oh, I did not really did over 400 home runs. People, you know, when they think Howard Kent Jr., they think this streak, right? 2,630 yeah. streak that's probably never going to be broken. But this guy was actually a phenomenal player. Rookie of the Year winner. Won an MVP. Uh, he has one World Series title, and yeah, over three thousand hits, four hundred home runs, and he hit the twenty home run mark twelve different times in his career. Elkin Jr. was kind of a guy who started the big shortstop trend. You know, six four, he was a big guy. You know, Troy Tulowitzki followed. I mean, obviously a little bit of time after that, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. uh, Cal Ripken Jr. That's going to be my shortstop. I like that. Yeah, I'd say it's between him and Ernie Banks. And I suppose Honus Wagner, too. Yeah, there's a few choices you could take, but yeah. I like that pick. Cal Ripken Jr. Yep. All righty. Well, do I stay on the hitting route? You know what? I'll take a picture just because I best take a picture right. for one. I'm going to take Sandy Koufax. Now, okay. I was just looking at baserooms.com. He's only got a 48.9 war. Yeah. But he, like for forever. It's, it's because he 
he retired at like 30 or 31 because he had yeah. like right ready he had like arthritis and he was worried he'd like never be able to use his arm again if he kept pitching mm-hmm. and he didn't start off very good so i don't know what it was but somewhere in there something just clicked but the reason i'm taking him is because that four or five year period the last four or five seasons of his career might be the best five season stretch in mlb history for a pitcher he pretty much single-handedly beat the twins in the 1965 world series he won three of the four games yeah so in his prime that if you just cherry pick those five years, he might be the best pitcher ever. That is why I'm taking him. That's a good career wise over the whole span. No, but if I can get the Kofax for those five years, I will take him. Um, I like that pick. I am gonna go starting or loading starting pitching here. I gotta go with again a guy that. May or may not get into the Hall of Fame. De- depends how you feel about it. But Roger Clemens. Darn it! I didn't think you'd take him. I would have taken him right there. Yeah, over 350 wins, a seven-time Cy Young Award winner. Um, darn, it, a- darn it, darn it. I'm pitching Triple Crown, won an MVP as well, too. Uh, Rod- oh. Roger Clemens is who I'm going with. So, Walter, mm, not happy. Randy Johnson, Roger Clemens, Nick. Dude, I didn't tough. think I didn't think I'd have to take Clemens that early. I didn't think you'd be on him, so I was I was waiting it out. Yeah, there's legitimate. Well, I know. Again, like with a Rod and Bonds, obviously he took Royd, and yep. and so you know how how good was he without? I don't know. Sure. But let's just say his career in general, the whole thing. Yeah. For ten years, take steroids. He might be the best pitcher. Ever, ever. Oh. He won seven Cy Youngs. He has two oh. twenty strikeout games. The dude was a beast for a long period of time. Absolutely. So uh, I don't like that pick because it's not me, but uh, that is a very, very good pick. I not happy with that. I wanted to get. I was. I would have taken Clemens earlier, but I, I, I did just didn't think he'd be on the Clemens radar. I wanted to get Clemens like. Kind of with my third or seventh pick, but I figured, you know what? I, I have a feeling he could drop, and thank goodness he did. Because... Walter Johnson was my number one, but it was Koufax or Clemens next. I just didn't think he'd be on the Clemens train. Well, sorry about it. Sorry about sorry. it. Because he's got a 139.2 war. I believe yeah. that's second or third. Or, Walter Johnson's got 164.5. Cy Young's up there. But I'm not that big on Cy Young. He just pitched like every darn day. I don't care. Right. So uh, Roger Clemens is up there all time for pitching more. You're anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. Thank you. Let's see. So I got four hitting spots open. Four starters. Um, like I said, I want to take starter now, but there's so many that you can pick from. I'm going to get a good one either way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, oh boy, you know what? I'm going to take second base. Okay. Now, it was between. Joe Morgan and Rogers Hornsby. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have Morgan up there, but he has like 600 some stolen bases, which is impressive. Yeah. So Rogers Hornsby, the two time MVP with a 447 career on base percentage and 340 career home, uh, 340 average. Wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm reading Gary. 434 on base percentage with a 358 average, as well as 301 home runs. So, and. 127.1 war. I yeah. Like it. I really liked it. So I'm going to take Rogers Hornsby. Rogers Hornsby, okay. Rogers. Team Duncan. Um, 
I have to fill my left field position. I have one more left fielder to go with. Um, I think it's a few different people. But at the end of the day, I think the main two guys, Ted Williams, Stan Musial, in my opinion, um, I'm going to go with Ted Williams for my left fielder. Yeah, I think you have to. Um, remember, this guy hit over 500 home runs in his career, missed about four years of playing baseball due to serving in the military. So only imagine if he played those four years, what his stats really been. Um, Might have been. Was it four? I think it was three full seasons. But yeah, three, was, it, that, that I think good. Babe Ruth, Barry Bonds, Ted Williams, maybe Willie Mays and Hank Aaron in there for best hitter of all time. I would say Bonds, Ruth, and probably Ted Williams are the top three. Maybe Willie. Because, yeah, the dude was 344 career average. Yep. Four. 482 career on base percentage. Yeah. Almost half. When they say baseball is a game of failure, it almost wasn't for Ted Williams. That's how good this dude was. So the fact that I couldn't pick him, well, I, I mean, I could, but I already had Bonds, Mays, and Ruth. Otherwise, I, I would love me some Ted Williams. But yeah, the dude was unbelievable. Batted 400 in a season. Yeah. Last player to do so, too. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the dude was unbelievable. And, yeah, if he didn't miss those times to the war, he'd probably have over 600 home runs rather than his 521. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good pick. Good pick. Thank you. All right. Um, I, now, relief pitching is probably the least important of the positions on this list, but – I'm confident I can fill a good starting rotation because, as I mentioned, I mean, this is over 100 years of baseball. There's plenty of starters to pick from. So I'm going to go ahead and take the best reliever of all time, the only unanimous Hall of Famer ever, Mariano Rivera. Clearly, you knew who I was talking about as soon as I said best yeah. reliever of all time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's, that is bad right there. The all time leader in ERA, plus, by the way, also. Okay. Okay. Um, Which is the array adjusted for ballpark and all that jazz. Right. More people have walked on the moon than than uh, Mariano Rivera has given runs. In the really? Although uh, he did blow a save in the 2001 World Series. He did. He did. That's true. Um, Even the best fail. That's very true. But yeah, I mean, I think almost any player would tell you he's the best reliever in history. So I'll go ahead and take him. Um, I am going to go. I go first base. Um, try and get some more plugging. On this team. Now, this one is tough because I think guys, whatever particular order, Lou what Gehrig. position are you going? Okay, first, yeah. Lou Gehrig, Albert Pujols, Jimmy Fox. I have the exact same three as my yeah final three. So, so I think you got to go with one of those guys for that position. And honestly, I take off the bed. At first, my my brother uh, uh, podcast. Thank you for joining us. He he's got to pick a first baseman of all time. I think Pujols would be your pick, right? Uh, the look look up first basemen and then look up their drug test. And see who tested positive for LSD the most oh, times, and tough. pick that guy, the guy that uh, all right. the most acid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have statistics on that, but all right. They all might, right. though. They might. They might. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's statistically possible. Uh, all righty. Right. Good. Good to know. Yeah. First. Where, where, where you go? Anywhere. I don't know. 
I think I got to go with. Sorry. <laughs> That's oh, fine. He's had a long day. A little, little commercial, little commercial break. Not too bad. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, well, I've had enough time to think about this, so I probably should make a decision. I think at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, Lou Gehrig was a phenomenal, phenomenal player. I just think Albert Pujols might be a tad better. Um. Obviously, Lou Gehrig's career was cut a little bit short. He played till he was 36, so what yeah, isn't I mean, he, bad. Yeah, I mean, he was 36, but his, his last season was still pretty darn good, though, too. So, yeah. It was. So, I think, I, I think I'm going to go Albert Pujols for first base. Um, I mean, when that guy in his prime, unbelievably talented. Not, not just offensive side, but defense. I think it was a phenomenal uh, Albert Pujols. And as I mentioned before, he is one of six people in Major League history with 3,000 hits and 500 home runs. So, yeah. That's- along with Hank Aaron, A-Rod, Willie Mays, Rafael Palmeiro, and Eddie Murray. Yep. Yes. The dude is a stud. I like that pick. Thank you. So, oh, my pen broke. All right. Well, that's not good. Um, oh, it'll still write. Oh, we're all right. All right. So I'm going to take another starting pitcher. Okay. I think I will go. So we discussed we were only going to do modern era as in like 1900 and on. Sure. I actually started 1900. <laughs> Christy <laughs> Mathewson. Okay. Okay. A career 2.13 ERA. 4,788 yeah. and two thirds innings hit. Yeah, that's that's that that's is per- unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that you got a nice you got a nice one two punch, Sandy Cole, Christy Matthewson. I mean, I think, I'm better, but. I will admit, your starters right now are better. I mean, I think Walton Johnson is probably the best pitcher of all time. Yeah. But, you know, I'll take Christy and Sandy. Hey, it's not too bad. Uh, Got to go with, in my opinion, the second best closer of all time and Trevor Hoffman. I actually disagree. That is a good pick, but he's, he's second all time in saves. I'm not sure if he's second best closer, but he's obviously yep. up there. Hmm. You don't think so? Well, see, I don't know who I'd actually say is number two. I'm just not convinced it's Trevor. But he's second all time in saves, and he's obviously really good. So you could have him. All right. All right. So you got the Hoffman. I got the Hoffman. Only other who blew a save against the Rockies because Matt Holiday did not touch home plate. All right. Hey, he blew a save because Matt <laughs> touched home. I got to bring that up like every podcast now. So. Oh, obviously. All right. Yeah. Next position. Yeah. Who's you going with? <sighs> Boy. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see here. Well, you already took first and catcher. Let's I see. I could go. I'm not sure this guy should be taken this early, but he's one of my favorite players ever. Okay. And I'm going to fill my designated hitter spot with David Big Poppy Ortiz. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it kind of, I mean, we didn't really go over stipulations, whether we, you know, put in postseason or regular season, how much it matters. But, you know, if I want a team for the postseason, David Ortiz is one of the best postseason hitters of all time. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'll have that clutch bat there. I will take me some big poppy. I like that. 
Um, so next, I'm going to go back to the bump. I'm up on this starting pitching. So for my number four starting pitcher, I got to go with the one, the only, Greg Maddox. Darn it. All right, I clearly got to take a starter next. <laughs> the guy, four times five award winner. Four in a row, I believe, right? Um, yeah, yep, four in a row. Probably. 18 time Gold Glove Award winner. Yeah. 18. 18. Yeah. We have, so Dan Chess, he plays town team with, with me. He's one of the older guys on the team. He's pitched for a long time. And him and a bunch of us, but, you know, a guy makes a good a good play on the mound, and somebody will yell, Maddox! <laughs> you hear it all the time. But yeah, oh. he, him and uh, what, Warren, no, Warren Spahn? No, him and uh, Jim Cott have oh. so many gold gloves between them. It's crazy. Maddox, accurate pitcher of all time, did not throw hard. Yes. He could just love extremely the well. Most, yes, probably the most accurate pitcher ever. Um. So, you're taking a lot of pitches that I want. Maddox wasn't in my top five, but after Walter and Clemens and whatnot, I, he was definitely going to be taken if you didn't take him. So, I best start taking – I best take a pitcher or your fifth one is another guy I want. Um, and one of the guys I actually have – so, my top five were Chris Madison, Walter Johnson, Clemens, Koufax, and the one guy who's left, Pedro Martinez, Oof. I think is a top five pitcher of all time. It is so. This was so hard. These pitchers. I mean, there's so many. It's hard to interpret with the ERAs. You know, you see some really low ERAs back in the early 1900s. It's just oh, yeah. the way it was. But uh, the you know in in from the the 90s and early 2000s, you got Maddox, Clemens, and and uh, Pedro. Right? Which one's better? I don't know. Yeah. But Pedro, yeah. along with Colfax, had one of the best five year runs in Major League history. And, I mean, the dude was just incredible for so many reasons. So, I'm going to take me Pedro Martinez. I love um, I will get another receiver. Um, I think I got to go with the former Open A Eckers. Uh, That's fine. Career 99, six on the all time save list with 390. In 19 and career, what did you say his career year was? Uh, 299. As a closer, that, that is his career year. Oh, I was going to say, because he was a starter for quite yep. a while, which would have affected that. But that's his closer year. He won in 1992, one of the best single season relief pitching seasons of all time. Led the league in games finished 65. 51 saves, 191 ERA, 7 1 record. He won the Cy Young and the MVP that season. He won MVP as a closer. Did they win the World Series that year? Uh, I can't remember. What season? 1992. I think it was the Blue Jays the year after the Twins. I think. Anyway. So you got the Hoffman. And Eckersley, huh? Mm-hmm. That is correct. Oh, I can afford to wait on first and catcher because we've already filled those. Mm-hmm. So, starting pitcher. We go for starter or reliever. You're called. I'm going to take reliever. Okay. I want to take one that I think you might take, though. No. You know, being that you just took an Oakland A reliever, I'm going to take the one I think is better, who has the best stash in the history of ever, Raleigh Fingers. I knew it. I want to see this bro on Raleigh Fingers with that stash. Ladies all over the place, then. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there's no chance you don't get 
the best, I mean, Raleigh Fingers, I mean, what a name. And then you have that stash, I mean, gosh. Oh, yeah. God gifted him. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty solid, I'd say. That's solid. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, the Oakland A. Oakland had him that's... and Eckersley. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's that's going to be tough to score runs on. Sure. Then there's the Colorado Rockies bullpen. Oh, I'd rather not talk about that. You're not going to find <laughs> Rockies pitchers on this list, I don't believe. I don't, I don't. I'll take one year of Adam out of Vino. Yeah. Um, I am going to go. I think we're just going to probably keep going relief pitching here. Since the position yeah, that we need are yes. one filled by the other guy. So. You have one starter left too, right? Or no? I do, yep. I have one starter left. Yeah. Um, I got to go with another reliever, though. I um, which would lead me to two more relief pitch spots. I'm going to go with Goose Passage. Over 300 saves in his career, 301 ERA for 1,500. Goose. Goose. Again, pretty good, pretty decent facial hair. Facial hair back to back, Raleigh Fingers. Goose and a name. And, and a good name. And a good name. Yeah, absolutely. Um, really solid player. A phenomenal uh, postseason pitcher. Five and three record, eight saves. Helped lead his team to the World Series three times. He only won the ship in 1978. I should know this, but Goose Gossage, is he a Yankee? Yep. Okay, yeah, was, I thought so. Fox two at one point. Yeah. But isn't that weird how many people have been both the Red Sox and a Yankee? Yeah. 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 Damon. Babe Ruth, had- obviously. <laughs> Clemens. Oh yeah. All right, he missed his turn. I will take another reliever and like I said, a number. I think Mariano is clearly the best reliever of all, all time. Number two is a toss up, and hardly anybody would put this guy at two. I don't think, but I personally think Billy Wagner might be the second best reliever of all time. Just hear me out. Two point three one career ERA. Two point three one. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five seasons under two ERA. 422 saves. Never led the league in saves, but 422 career. The 2.31 ERA. I will take Billy Wagner. I, I used to like, I used to love the Mets. I mean, I've always been a Twins fan, but like when Johan went to the Mets and whatnot, I used to love the Mets. So like Billy yeah. Wagner towards the end of his career is Met. I like me some Billy Wagner. Um, again, like I said, I think Trevor Austin number two, but really, I I do like. I do like Billy Wagner a lot. I I've like seen him. that 2.31 year, and I mean, that's pretty well, darn good. They're really hard. Um, so I'm going to fill my final starting pitching spot. So I get that. And I got to go with Tom Seaver the, from the New York. Mm. Four yeah. boards, uh, numerous All Star games, over 300, 3,000 strikeouts, 4,000 innings. Uh, extremely here, Tom Spriffick, uh from the Mets. So my starting pitching, I feel very solid with. I am very content. Oh yeah. With oh yeah. Okay. It's quite good. But now, your turn. Well, I will might as well finish off or continue the relief pitching trend. I will go with who also probably won't be in the debate because, you know, his he's kind of done for already, but Craig Kimbrell. I don't think people realize how good this dude, how good of a career this guy has had. His career ERA is 2.08. 2.08. Yeah. With 346 saves. Now, he had a 6.53 ERA last year at age 31. So he's, I mean, maybe he's pretty much done so at a very early age. But I mean, what this guy's done in his career already is amazing. 
so I will take Craig Kimbrell, who has such a weird delivery, like like how he stands beforehand, but whatever. Well, supposedly behind that, one of my buddies told me one time that I think he does that because, like, if he does it the normal way, his arm hurts or something like that. And so when he puts over like that, apparently it helps it out so he can throw 120. Yeah, I like a little – I like different, so, hey, whatever. It's just kind of frustrating on the show or something. He takes forever. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, see, I'm not I, – I pitch. I mean, I pitch, but I'm not that great of a pitcher. I just kind of go out there, throw strikes, and get rocked. I'm the guy who goes in when we're down by a bunch. But I'm not – I can't – I can barely throw a curveball, and I don't throw hard. So I just try to do anything at all to screw with the pitchers. Yeah. So last year, I went from the windup, then the stretch. Windup, stretch, rotated every other pitch. It was hilarious. It, by the time I did it like three times, they finally realized what was going on, but it actually worked. I was like, hey, I like it. So oh, I've done all sorts of weird things on the mound, too. Hey, whatever gets a job done, you get those guys out, it doesn't really matter what happens. I was in a playoff game one time against St. Peter. We thought the game was pretty much over. We were getting, I mean, we were losing pretty bad late. And this was a, if we lose, we're done. So I go in. I, like, accidentally grunted on a pitch. I don't know why. I accidentally grunted. But it was a strike, and it was hilarious. So all of a sudden, you know, I'm just having a good time on the mound, right? I just started doing it on purpose. I was just grunting when I was pitching. People were laughing. It was hilarious. And it was working. And then finally, I threw it behind the guy by accident, literally behind him. I'm like, yeah, we best stop with this. <laughs> well, I got a little event. I did pretty good. And then I eventually I had a bases loaded jam I had to get out of. Or I had to, got taken out. And our reliever got us through it. And St. Peter had a bunch of errors and blew it. And we won. But oh. so... Just had to get in there, but yeah, I like I've done a lot of weird things on the mound. So, hey, like I said, whatever gets them out, right? Whatever right. gets, you got to do what you got to do. Like Sean Marion shooting a basket. Don't know how it goes in, but hey, it goes in. But hey, it it goes in, and that's all that matters. <laughs> um, I think. Pitching mound for obviously, I have all my starting pitch filled, but I am gonna go relief. Lee Smith at one point yeah. had saves major league baseball history till Trevor Hoffman caught him, and an obvious Mariano Rivera as well. 6'6, 265, 478 career saves third most in history um he led in career saves from 93 until 2006 obviously like i said when trevor hoffman um passed him there well at least well what's impressive about trevor hoffman is like he played for the padres like who were never been very good yeah. <laughs> he's still second all time in saves yeah Yes, Lee Smith, very, very good reliever. Um, I will round out my bullpen with, I mean, maybe this is a little bit of a, a, bit of a homer pick, but the dude's got 2.87 career, a 26.7 war. I will take Joe Nathan, who for a while was just lights out. In 06, 07, 08, 1.58, 1.88, and 1.33 ERA, and a 1.39 in 2013 with Texas. I remember when I used to go to games at the Dome where we had Nathan, and he'd come in for the ninth inning. The whole place would get up on their feet and cheer, and you just knew it was over. The dude just came in and shut them down. Best best reliever in Twins history by far. By far. Oh, Nathan. Who was I, originally a shortstop. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, he got him in that A.J. Pruszynski trade. I think at the time he was still a shortstop. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I Which like. I find it. weird because he I don't doesn't look like a shortstop. Um. Okay. So let's see. So I gotta get one more. You need a DH, some relievers, right? Yeah, I need one more reliever. So I. I got to go with uh, 
Who was that? Bruce Suter to finish out my um, mm-hmm. finish out my relief pitch save. Uh, Do you think Aroldis is close to being on here? Because I've never even been a big Aroldis guy. I always thought he was overrated just because people thought he was so good because he threw hard. But when I actually look at it, I mean, he's had a real legit career. And last year he was really good. He was the reliever of the year in the AL. I don't think he's too far off. I really don't. I, I think maybe a couple more seasons he's probably cracked, if not already cracked into the top ten. I mean, he could certainly make that. I have him in my top ten, but it's yeah, it's cool. yeah. Um, all right, yeah, your turn then. Got a couple more um, left. I will take another starter. So you know, there's. There's Nolan Ryan out there, but honestly, not as good as I don't think people as people think. He just has the strikeouts. He's not up there with some of these all-time greats, I don't think. So pass on him. I'm I kind of got a really old <laughs> rotation besides Pedro. I'm just gonna add a little age to that. I'm going to take Pete Alexander. Okay. 2.56 career ERA with 373 wins and a 119 war. That, uh, that's going to win you some ball games. So what? I got Pete Alexander, Christy Matthews, and Sandy Koufax. I got some old dudes on the mound, man. Hey, wh- whatever gets the job done, man. They, they <laughs> all right ahead. Back to third base. Because I do not have a third baseman, I'm no, not. No, no. no, I'm not going to go Nolan. Although by the time his career is all over, I probably will go Nolan. But as of right now, I think because you got Mike Schmidt, so I want to go Brooks Robinson. And since I. I'm, I'm saying, I, I was going to say, since I took A-Rod at short, I'd say he's off the table. So. Sure. sure. Um, Unless you really wanted to, whatever. Uh, no, that's I'm not, I wasn't going to. Um, I, I'm going to go Eddie Matthews mm. uh, for my third base. There's a few different guys. I think Wade Bob, you know, George Brett, Chipper Jones. Um you know, I, super solid. But I think at the end of the day, I got to go with uh, Eddie Matthews. Extremely solid player. Um, yeah. Over home runs, 2,300 hits. Uh, average not incredibly high at 271, but he slugged 509. So it's certainly not too bad there. Uh, so I'm going yeah, with Eddie Matthews. third base, when I was looking at third, I think Schmidt's the obvious one. If you, if you want to throw A-Rod in there as his whole career, yeah. Um, a Rod's definitely, I mean, the dude's stats are crazy. It's just, you know, he's got the steroids, or whatever. But after those two, it's it's like. It's pretty wide open. It could be a slew of a whole. It could be a whole slew of guys. I'd probably go Chipper because his on base percentage is really high. Yeah. And he's got like four cents a stud, and then he got he wasn't quite as nice. I, I, I like Murray though. Um, 